2014. 2014? Yes, ma'am. And you saw the individuals from the um, the vehicle, correct? Yes, and I'm not I'm not 100% sure that the, those were the individuals that fired the shots or not, but because I didn't see, like, I didn't see guns on them, but, like, right after the shots, they sped and, like, squealed their tires and stopped in the, the middle of the parking lot, and two gentlemen got out of their vehicles. Um, I really, I didn't, I, I couldn't tell you much other than the fact that they were both um, black males and slightly longer hair, and one was wearing a camo shirt, but we were just concerned with getting in the car and getting my nephew in the yeah. car. Okay. All right. We do have um, something going on in the area. We'll have officers meet you out there. Uh, I'm sorry. Hold on one second. Uh, um, can you repeat that? Yes, ma'am. I was just letting you know if... Um, the officers need you that uh, the can come around there. I put all that in the call. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye bye. Bye bye. Miss LeBlanc, was that your 911 call? Your portion of it? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Your Honor, that's all I have. Mr. Strolla? Yes, Your Honor, thank you. <laughs> Doing all right. I can imagine it was a terrifying evening. Yes, sir. Ever been involved in anything like that? No, sir. Anybody ever been around gunshots fired and cars squealing tires in your direction? No, sir. And you were there with your brother? Yes, sir. Right. And you were still nervous, correct? Yes, sir. And you were almost in a state of panic or stress, is that fair to say? Yes, sir. Okay. Shook you up pretty good? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, isn't it true that when you heard the tire squealing around the corner, you actually started going towards your car and your brother started going in another direction? Um... When the tires started squealing, I was already at, at my car. Right, and your brother was actually walking away from the car, correct? Yes. It was kind of a nerve-wracking experience, wouldn't you agree? Yes, sir. And when they stopped, you had no idea what they were going to do, did you? Correct. And matter of fact, we just heard your 911 call, and you really couldn't even give that great of a description, and that's probably because of how you felt inside. Is that fair? Correct. Okay. And matter of fact, isn't it true you even said you don't even recall at one point getting on the phone with 911? Correct. All right. So even now hearing it months and months ago, you didn't even remember getting on the phone. You were that shaken up. Is that fair? Correct. Okay. And matter of fact, do you recall that it wasn't until December 4th that you actually spoke with law enforcement? I don't remember the exact date. Would it refresh your recollection to look at a report? Sure. Your Honor, if I can approach. And yes. for the record, I'm going to show opposing counsel judge. It's supplemental five. I know it's, it's 22 of 25. I know there's 31, but this is the original one I was given in discovery. Okay. Judge, if I can approach. Yes, sir. Ms. LeBon, I'm just going to show you a police report. Don't read from it. It's not in evidence. I just want to see if it refreshes your recollection. And I've got it highlighted. And it's got a date with some information with your name. Yes, it says December 4th. Don't read from it yet. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> By looking at that, does that refresh your recollection? Yes. Okay. Does that seem accurate and fair? I would say so, yes. Okay. I'm just going to show you a second page, and for the record for opposing counsel, it's 23 of 25. It looks like on another date you gave a sworn statement. Would that refresh your recollection of the date? Correct, yes. Okay. Do you recall now on December 4th meeting with detectives? Yes. Okay. That was almost two weeks after November 23rd, correct? Yes. Okay, and then two days later, you actually gave a sworn statement to the state attorney, Ms. Wolfson, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, on the 911 call, you actually give the dispatcher your home address, correct? Correct. They actually indicate to you, if we need you, we'll send officers over to talk to you, correct? Correct. And nobody contacted you for two weeks. Isn't that true? Um, I didn't speak to anyone. Um, I spoke to the de detective on the phone when I got his card in my door mm -hmm. um, to meet with me, but I didn't speak about what I had seen until December 4th. Right, and how soon after you got the card did you meet with him on December 4th? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Did you meet with him the day you got his card? You called him that day, correct? N no, sir. Did you talk to him on the phone? I did. Okay, and was that December 4th? I don't remember what date I spoke with him on the phone. Okay, but... But I believe I met with him a couple of days after I, I called him. Okay. But again, the first time you have is December 4th. Is that accurate? Where yes. you actually met with them to talk to them? Yes. Okay. And again, that night, no officers came to your house? 
No, sir. The next day, nobody came to your house? No, sir. A couple days after that, nobody came to your house to talk to you about this? No, sir. Okay. Now, Mr. Guy asked you some questions about, did you see this? Did you see that? Um, pretty busy parking lot, right? When you arrived at the loop, you were all the way in the very last row farthest away. Bless you. Correct. Okay, and that was because there were so many cars there already for people in the businesses, dinner, things like that, correct? I would assume so. All right. Otherwise, you probably would have parked in the first row where your roommate found a spot. Correct. Okay. And again, when you left, there were still cars in the parking lot. You didn't close the loop down or hang out and drink or anything like that. that that's correct. There were still cars in the parking lot, yes. Right. And there was even still cars in the row you were in, correct? Probably. I don't recall. Okay. You don't have a clear memory of that? No, sir. All right. And again, it was a very stressful time, correct? Correct. So when they come out and you see the driver get out, he actually gets out of his door. Is that correct? Correct. He then goes to the back door and opens it, true? Yes. You then see the driver of the red SUV reach into that car. Isn't that true? He was leaning in, yes. And you can't see him at this point. Isn't that true? Correct. I can just see his lower half. Right. You can't see what he's doing in the car, right? No, sir. You can't see where his hands are, what he's saying, anything like that, right? No, sir. And he's the one on the phone, correct? Correct. All right. And you even said that if he was screaming or yelling, you were close enough, you would have heard him. Is that he true? Yes, sir. And you didn't hear him talking on the phone, did you? Um, I couldn't hear what he was saying, no. He, wasn't, he didn't seem in shock or panicked or screaming or yelling. Is that fair? Not particularly, no. Okay. But it is fair to say that? It's fair, yes. Okay. Thank you. Now, the passenger gets out. Is that true? Correct. Now, the passenger is on the other side of the Durango. The Durango is actually looking at you, and you're on a diagonal from it, correct? Correct. There's other cars in the parking lot? Is correct. that true? The, the, the driver's door is open? Is correct. that true? The back passenger behind the driver is open. Is that true? I mean, you have two doors open now, the driver and then the passenger behind. Oh, him. correct, yes. Okay, and he's now, you can't see what he's doing in the truck, true? No, sir. Okay, and now, on the other side, the driver, the passenger gets out, excuse me, the passenger, he leaves his door open, doesn't he? I believe so. And I... then he opens up what you think is the back door, isn't that true? Um, the passenger, I couldn't yes. see what he was doing after he got out of the, the car. All right, so you actually lose the entire sight of the passenger, right front passenger of that vehicle. Is that true? Correct. And you said all this happens in about a minute? About, yes. All right. So when Mr. Guy asked you, you didn't see anything thrown from the vehicle. There was a vantage point you couldn't even see. Isn't that true? Correct. I couldn't see the passenger. Right. You, and you can't see what the driver's doing inside the car. Correct. Right. And you do know the passenger got out. Isn't that right? Yes. Because you actually watched them both get in after about a minute. Yes, sir. And at one point, you had to get in the car and started. Is that true? Correct. So your eyes are completely diverted away from the Durango. Correct. All right, I mean, obviously, and then when you back out and put the car in reverse, you're looking down at your vehicle. Is that true? I mean, I, I, I could still see them. We were backing out at the same time. No, no, I understand that. But when you start the car and put it in reverse, you have to look down and take your t eyes off of them to do that. Is that fair? Correct. All right, and then when you back out, obviously you don't want to run somebody over. You're looking behind you, correct? Correct. Right, you just didn't back straight out looking at the Durango. Correct. Right. And then as you back out, the red SUV is backing out, correct? Correct. And then you drive forward. Correct. Now, as you drive forward, are you now still looking in the rearview mirror as you're driving straight through a parking lot? Yes. All right, so you're not even focused on what's in front of you. I mean, I could see that there were no cars in front of me. No one was backing out, but I could see that the, the red SUV had backed into the the gate gas station. No, no, and I understand that. But my question is, you didn't watch the SUV the entire time it backed out. You had other things that you needed to do to safely leave that scene. Correct. And is it safe to say your number one priority was self-preservation, making sure you're safe? Yes? Yes. Making sure your brother's safe? Yes. And making sure your nephew's safe? Yes. That's your priority? Yes. Okay. And in that aspect, you don't know what happened outside of your presence, right? No, sir. And you have no idea what happened on the other side of that vehicle, correct? No, sir. And you have no idea what happened back at the gate station, do you? No, sir. Are you familiar with that area? Yes, I lived there. Right. There's bushes back there behind the gate. Have you been there? There's like a little bread company right next to the gate. Yes. You ever go over there? I've been there once. All right. Did you ever see dumpsters and trees and bushes back there? There are, yes. All right. As a matter of fact, there's a road 
that goes from the plaza behind the gate gas station to go to Bay Meadows, true? But behind the plaza or behind the gas station? Behind the, from the plaza behind the gate gas station. So you don't have to go through the gas station. I'm not sure. Okay, but that would be on the picture if it is. You just not, you're not sure if it's there? Correct. Okay, but you know there's obviously dumpsters and things like that back there from going there. Correct. Okay, but again, you have no idea. You're not here to testify to this jury what happened other than what you had the ability to see, correct? Correct. Okay. And matter of fact, the officers kind of asked you the same questions Mr. Guy did, correct? Correct. You also gave a sworn statement two days later on December 6th, is that true? Correct. And you actually gave it with Ms. Wolfson who's here today? Correct. And two homicide detectives? Correct. And now you reviewed your testimony with them before they recorded your statement, isn't that true? Correct. Were they, did they let you listen to the 911 call? I don't believe I listened to the 911 call. Okay, but you do recall going over your version of what you saw prior to the taping or Correct. the recording. Um, they, they asked me the same questions, essentially. Okay, and that was before they hit the recorder to record you and swear you in. Is that true? Correct. And you kind of took an oath to tell the truth like you did today? Correct. And you took an oath like you did to do in the deposition? Correct. Okay. Would you say the 911 call is a fair and accurate representation of what was going on that night? Yes, sir. Did you lie at all on the 911 tape? No, sir. Did you try to create any story or anything that didn't happen? No, sir. Were you trying to be a hero or anything like that, ma'am? No, sir. Was your brother doing anything like that? No, sir. You were just reporting what you saw? Correct. And that 911 tape would be the best evidence of what you saw and what happened that night? Correct. Okay. Now, you actually saw this on TV, this case, after it happened. Is that true? Yes, sir. You actually, it was highly televised. I mean, we can agree to that? Definitely. I mean, social media, TV media, newspapers, and, and you were part of that. You got to see that, correct? Yes, sir. And that was before you even talked to the police on December 4th. Is that accurate? I believe I had seen uh, on the news before yes. I spoke to the um, detectives. Detect yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. And before you gave your sworn statement? Correct. Okay. And also, you would talk to your brother about what you guys had seen that night, too, as well. Correct. And did you talk about what you had seen on TV and the news and things like that? I don't think, I don't recall exactly what we discussed other than what we had seen. Okay, but you guys did talk about that evening. Correct. And it's possible you did talk about the media coverage, you just don't recall. Correct. Okay. And at one point, you had to try to find your keys to give to your brother to unlock the door, correct? Correct. I think the car that you had at the time, you didn't have like a remote control to unlock it. You had to physically put the key in and unlock it. Correct. All right. And you didn't have electric locks. You kind of had to reach over and open the other side. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, my brother did that. I'm sorry? Uh, my brother put my nephew in the car, so he unlocked it okay. manually. Did, did he unlock your side and let you in, or did he unlock his side and, and get um, his well, son in? My nephew's car seat was on the driver's side of the vehicle, mm -hmm. so he had to go around to the driver's front driver's side and unlock the, that door and then unlock the back door through the front door and then put my nephew in. And by doing so, your brother would have to have his back turned to the Durango because of the way you were parked? Correct. And where the Durango was? Correct. Okay. And where were you standing when all this was going on? I was still behind, uh, or not behind, I was on the passenger side of the car still. So. Yeah, you, you, you were behind your car for protection? Correct. Okay. Nothing further, Your Honor. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Guy? Thank you. Ms. LeBlanc, when the, um, the driver le leaned into the car and, and he came back out, did you see anything in his hands? No, sir. You see the only thing I saw in his hand was a cell phone. Did you see anything sticking out of his pockets? No, sir. Anything on him at all other than the cell phone? No, sir. You were asked about... Um, what was going on in the driver's mind when he was looking into the car? Judge, I don't believe I asked that question, Your Honor. Judge, I, I believe the question was, do you know what was going through his mind when he was looking through the, in, the, in the back of the car? I don't recall that, but I guess we can check and see if you'd like. Please. Let, let me... Let me 
while she's looking, let me see over here at the sidebar so I can see what you're trying to tell me. And this doesn't need to be on the record, I don't think. Well, yeah, go ahead, Melanie. We took a little shorter break before when we were doing this. I'm going to make a little short break now because this should only take another minute or two. And so I'll give you a short break. When you come back in, we got one more witness for the day, and then we'll be finished. So, again, don't discuss the case among yourselves or anybody else discuss the case in your presence. See you back in a couple of minutes.